Okay. Uh, like you see, okay, there are our friends, the trees. Now it might be that we are a little bit tired, so let's uh, let's dance for the trees. All right, there is a short profile of Merkur, which is a Danish cooperative bank with full license. It is established in uh, 82. Nowadays it has uh, more than 20,000 clients for offices in, uh, in uh, 79 employers and okay, all, all the time for us in this age of calculative numbers, minds, uh, 283 million euros balance sheet. But what is different is that the focus is really on the sustainability with emphasis on environmental, uh, social cohesion and culture. So approximately 80 to 85 percent of the financing out is to the projects which are ecological, cultural or social. Of course they mixed. People who do ecological things also are social and maybe also a cultural. But there is another thing which is as it's a core value, and this is about the transparency. So the projects which are giving out the loans, they are all shown to you. You can even go and have a look if you want. Uh, another thing still is that Merkur says that the targeting rate of return for it to give out is from 5 to 7 percent. And now this is something what is very uh, personally inspiring to me. This is a bank which says that no, we do not need any maximum profit. We have set us a limit. So there is a limit. Something is enough for us. All right, so Merkur in Denmark, it's a big, it's a, a bigger, big, small bank. In Finland, what we have done is very, very small. Basically, we are financing small ecological, social and cultural initiatives. We do have a knowledge of small businesses and projects. We sometimes give up them financial advice and we kind of try to facilitate financial advice also. We are using uh, ordinary securities, of course, but also some securities based on communities around the initiatives. It's a kind of a collateral circles. We keep out small loans up till 500,000 euros. And now in Finland, the Finnish savers have a knowledge. They can have a knowledge what the bank does with their savings. So this is very important thing it, in, indeed. So the projects you finance, they are kind of in the leaflet, you know, here, it is in Finnish, shown to you. And you know, if I am a saver and I have wanted to put my money into the loans to the ecological things, then they are cleaners who also think that ecological cleaning is really the one what we would like to do. And they tell about their things. And so the customer or the client gets the knowledge, you know, this transparency. What have the money really done? Mm. It's great. Anyway. Okay. Well, uh, because our thing is very small, uh, I, would, I would really like it to give you some examples 
or some, some example, you know, what is it really to do this? So here is an example of Uusi Tuuli. It's kind of a new wind. And they have had an EU project. They had a ship, which name was Estelle. It was a sailing ship for fair trade. When we started working with them, of course, we instantly knew that, okay, this is a social, cultural and ecological initiative. It was very easy to work with them. This is the first step when you go into the loan process. You look at the project and then get the knowledge that what they are really doing, you know, what are their needs and why they are doing what they are doing. Uh, this is the first step. The second step is, of course, to have a look at, okay, that they can pay back. It's an economically viable project. project. So to be in, able to pay back is for things which make profit, of course, but also for things what are not for profit. So most of the initiatives we are working on is something that people get self-employed and not really, really, you know, wanted to have a big, huge profit. Profit is okay, of course, also, uh, because you need to have put money investing, but not for profit is, of course, also for us also, people, because one can do work also just to give out ideas and have a, have a different uh, world. Well, then you start to do this economical assessment. You look at the annual reports, future budgets, and you, in this type of project, you actually look at a little, little bit more the ability to have own financing, which is needed in these EU projects. Oops. Well, then we come to the third steps, which is about the securities. And as we are a bank, there is of course also a need to have a securities behind the loans. If something gets wrong, we get the money back so that the savers can have their deposits back because they want to have their money. And now usually some projects, they have, don't have any kind of fixed things what they can give us as a security. So what we do is that we form these collateral circles. Now, for instance, we, we, have, we are working many, many with a project we have, who have friends around them. And then in this Uusi Tuuli case, well, there was 20 friends who wanted to come and share the risk. So, as a process, we used the EU agreement partly as a collateral because they did have a project. Then we formed together with the initiative a circle of people interested in the initiative, friends of the project. The thing is that to become a member of the circle, is that no one guarantees alone the whole project. One takes a part, what it could for him or herself. And rule of the, really about the circle is that you can take a risk with this uh, approximately two months brutto salary. So it's thought about that if something goes wrong and you as a guarantee, you know, it's, you have to pay. Then if you kind of don't have two months salary, you will still survive. During this process, the current gets information of the initiative and about the risk of the initiative. So we phone them and tell about that, okay, they have told us this and this about the economic situation. Have you heard about this? What do you think? What are the risks? The risks are discussed with the projects and other guarantees. And this is actually a very important part of the loaning, because here comes the, really the dialogue. They are the friends of the project. They know something about it. They give the information to the projects, and then the projects have to come back to this question. that Okay, they said this and this and this. How we can change our something that we kind of take into this information and use it. So this is a very, very, very important part of the, of the process. Then during the whole loan period, the current gets information of the project. You know, what's happening there. Mm -hmm. And this way, 
actually they kind of they do have a connection to the project before but through the loaning process we hope all of us the initiative and us that the the connection gets deep all right so we have been doing a little bit this work in now in finland <coughs> but in our kind of uh, destiny it came so that we met other people who in finland were interested in social banking which is this movement called all over the world and uh, we as i'm a contact person to danish bank which is merkur that is already a bank and in a way that cannot be done anymore again now there were new people coming in interested in this but Merkur is already there and that cannot be changed. In a way, through this work with Merkur, we have now a seed of social banking in Finnish society. But what will it really be to the Finnish society, as it in Denmark is like that? What do we want to have in Finland? So through these people, we met, we formed a new initiative, which is called Pankki kaksi, bank 2.0. And okay, you know about this two point. Is that the first is something we are not kind of, uh, we do not kind of really, really like, is that we need something better. And then it is the second phase of the banking. Uh, we, in this work, we formed uh, a companion agreement with Merkur, and there was also a small initiative called Osuskunta Ekosusraha. And now, in this uh, initiative, they are kind of our friends. And what is really nice, of course, that some support, money, money wise, we get from them. But what will happen now to us when we go to the new worlds it's still that we want to walk, work, work in the uh, supporting sustainable projects there are now more people of course in the in the work that than than now when i'm talking to you i'm kindly this is the work i will do also in the project uh, in forming about uh, sustainable and um, transparent banking in in finland so supporting small sustainable projects in such a way that financing comes from the community of the project. And I think this is a really, really, really uh, interesting. It's really something that, that if, if you have an idea and it has around it friends, they can be connected really, really closely to you. Also, they can connect, be connected somewhere else, but thinking about that this idea is really nice to have in our society. Can we become the friends so that the money comes from us? So money as investment, loan or gift in a clear, transparent way in small sums, it's our aim. Everyone, make, everyone can make an initiative and join the community. This is going to be copyleft. You know, just if we can create things, then copy them and use them. It's really nice. Now, an experience of this new phase. There was a uh, organic food shop. There was a couple of people who wanted to put an organic food, food shop in Tampere. It name was, was Tila Kaupung, is a, fa a farm in town. There were farmers who wanted to come and put up an organic food shop. We gave together a share issue of 100,000 euros. They wanted to have both farmers and customers as owning of the shops. And through the process, the solution was really that the financing came around the community. This was the thing done in this summer. And we asked for 100,000, what was needed really, and we get 120,000. There was 312 new shareholders who came in here. And, ooh. 
And like we do these things, uh, we also kind of, uh, we have our personal journeys there. And there might come some questions to us on these personal journeys. And if I look at the personal journeys I'm kind of heading this, they are the questions like how we can create equal uh, economical relationships. My very personal question to myself is also is how much is enough? And uh, what is an economy serving people like? What kind of economy could serve people? And, uh, you know, I really don't have any answers to this. So uh, what I have heard also a good good kind of how to how to how to go on there to try to find the answers then it comes to this really this action research thing uh, so we are looking for answers that may not yet be but which form a study path through trial and error action research so it's important to act then you should reflect assess and to change one's habits. So everything to try, which is not really easy. And that's that. Thank you.